we have a fun one today. It's Yes, Close to the Edge, released on September 13th, 1972. It has three tracks, and it was produced by Yes and Eddie Offord, who also doubles as the recording engineer. And we know Eddie because he is working on Emerson, Lake, and Palmer and helping produce and record their albums with Greg Lake. And uh, on this album, yes, is John Anderson on vocals, Steve Howe on guitar, Chris Squire on bass, Rick Wakeman on keyboard, piano, synth, organ, Mellotron, everything. And Bill Bruford is the drummer. Uh, this album, the, the songs are excellent. I'll just start there. But the music, um, I don't quite know how to express this, but... There are better versions of all these songs on various live albums from Yes, including like um, Keys to Ascension, Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman, Howe, and Yes songs. You know, take your pick. I actually prefer those versions of all these songs to this one. But uh, this is the studio version, so it's the original. And uh, I think one thing that the studio version suffers from, especially on the title track, Close to the Edge, is just the, the sheer amount of editing it took to get it all done, you know. And uh, I'll talk about that when we when we get to the song. Uh, but yeah, the live I would argue that the live uh, versions of these songs individually are better than what you hear on here. But still, it makes for a great studio album. Um, in Yes Years, which uh, by the way I have this, so I I have the original Yes Years VHS. <laughs> you can tell it's quite tattered. I I used to watch it a lot, um, and I I watched it recently just so I could take some notes. Steve Howe describes the the basis of composition for. Um, the title track and some of these songs, but he talks about how they would organically grow them by um, hedging bets, scrapping sections, thinking about what they've been playing recently and does it fit certain sections when they hear it from other band members, etc. And Steve Howe says, we started writing all of our songs that way and basically starting with a simple idea and everybody adding to it uh, with an emphasis on melody and plateauing the melody. And this is different, you know, the way he t talks about it, it's different from what they did on Fragile, which, you know, they had the solo recordings on Fragile, and then um, they already had songs built. They were adding to them, but this, they did that for the whole the whole album, okay? Uh, what else? The album cover and logo are designed by Roger Dean, and I'll just say this. This is a 1994 remaster, and you can, um, it's got that red and green label from Atlantic Records. Uh, but, you know, the the cover is this black fading to green. And in the middle, it's sort of like, I don't know, has a hazy effect. It says close to the edge on top in blue print. And then you've got the what's now going to become the standard Yes logo. I believe this is the first time they've used it is on this record. And, uh, yeah, I've always wondered, like, why why did they choose this album cover with the black fading to green. I don't know if any of you know it. I've, you know, I've, I've been looking for that for years and I can't find an answer. I don't know what it means. Is this the edge or, you know, maybe this green is the earth and the black is outer space. And that's, I, I don't know what it means symbolically, um, symbolically. The inside you have the lyrics, uh, which I, uh, listened to as I wrote this review and, uh, you got a nice artwork here from Roger Dean. This is definitely the edge. I mean, this is definitely, like, symbolically the edge of the earth. And, uh, yeah, so this is, the, this is the 94 remaster edition. And on the back, you've got the names of the songs. And, um, yeah, interesting that Close to the Edge is split into four sections. And that's how I'll talk about it during the review. But I never think of it as four different tracks or parts of a song i always think of it as one song close to the edge same with and you and i which they've you know broken down into four tracks or four pieces and then the last track is siberian katru okay this is uh this is a prog rock album there's no real other kind of genre you could classify it as i um i it, to me it's progressive rock and the the true question is is this the best prog rock album of all time? And I would be interested in your guys' take on that in the comments, if you could leave a comment. Uh, or maybe you even think this is the best album of all time. You could also leave that in the comments too. And then lastly, before we deep dive into the songs, I, I have the Yes Complete 
uh, deluxe edition, which has all the um, it has all the songs, and it's the uh, vocals, piano, and guitar arrangements. And uh, it was published by I think Warner, right? Yep, Warner Brothers. So it's legit, and it seems legit to me. And uh, that's what I leaned on for musical analysis for that. And uh, I think that's it. Let's get right into the uh, the analysis. Track one is the title track on Close to the Edge. It's called Close to the Edge. And as I said, it's broken up into four parts. The Solid Time of Change, Total Mass Retain, I Get Up, I Get Down is the third part. And then lastly, Seasons of Man. And we'll go through each of these step by step. The lyrics to the entire song uh, are credited to Anderson and Howe. And if you look in the, if you look in here, it says music arranged by yes, but it doesn't say music by yes. And so uh, the credit to the song goes to Anderson and Howe. That's just how they did it. So they're the authors. Uh, it's 18 minutes and 50 seconds long from end to end. And uh, listening to John Anderson talk about it in Yes Years, he talks about how uh, they built a minute, two minutes, three minutes. 60 seconds editing getting the scissors out and editing to get another i another piece the idea of starting a long piece of music is to let the music control you this is what john anderson says and that is how they build the piece so um they just built everything on top of each other and i've often referred to this song with one of my friends as the uh, it's the best song ever built is how we call it so um anyway Part one is the solid time of change for Close to the Edge. It's in the key of D major, and it the key cha does change the C major during the bass part. So you have the long introduction in D major, and then when when Chris Squire starts doing the do 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 that part is in C major from then on, and the tempo is moderate but changing and. It's mainly in 12-8 changing to 9-8 time, which is, if you can think of 8, so 8th notes get one beat, so 12 eighth notes per measure or 9 eighth notes per measure. And in the chorus, it switches up to 3-2 and 3-4 time. Okay, so the introduction uh, to the solid time of change, which is the intro to the song, the first thing you hear are the birds chirping, and as John describes it as environmental music or environmental tapes. And then a long build-up with Rick Wakeman playing this frantic keyboard part. This, and then the um, when you get to the part where they sing dot dot da at two minutes and fifty-seven seconds, that's when you know you're getting closer to the first verse. But it keeps going. The main melody of the song after the dot dot part kicks in, and it's uh, it's basically Steve Howe playing. Da 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 da, and that that whole introduction lasts right up until the four minute mark. At four minutes, you switch to the verse, and John Anderson sings, "A seasoned witch could call you from the depths of your disgrace." That's a ten bar verse, and then after the verse is the chorus. The chorus is when John Anderson sings, "Down at the edge, round by the corner, not right away, not right away." The first part of that, he's singing, I, I think, with Chris and Steve. The second part, it's just John. Um, the first time he sings the chorus, it's, uh, well, actually, this time, it's 14 bars, and the second time, too. But the second time, John Anderson, instead of singing, not right away, not right away, he sings, I get up, I get down. Okay, so it's a 14-bar chorus. And then there's a post-chorus, which uh, they don't tag the post chorus on every time they have a chorus just this one time and john sings now that it's all over and done now that you're fine now that you're whole and that post chorus is in four four time and three four time and that is essentially what makes up the solid time of change now you've got a mix up of choruses and verses and that song arrangement is verse chorus verse chorus post chorus that takes you to part two total mass retain which starts at 6.05 and runs to 8.29, which is about uh, 2 minutes and 24 seconds. It continues in the key of C major at a moderate tempo. And again, it's still mainly in 12.8 time, although it does switch to 3.2 time again. Uh, the verse is, 
uh, it's it's a similar verse to what's in the first part of the song, the solid time of change. But in the total mass retained, the first verse is, my eyes convince eclipse with the younger moon attained with love. That's eight bars. That's how you know you're in total mass retained. And then the the chorus is, down at the end, close by a river, close to the edge, round by the corner. That's an eight bar chorus, so it's shorter this time. And in total mass retained, that's pretty much what it is. It's verse, verse, chorus, verse, verse, chorus, instrumental. And that instrumental, um, it's not too long, but what it does is it sets you up for set three, which is I get up, I get down. And that part starts at 829 and goes to 1414. So just under six minutes, but over five and a half minutes. This is the most dramatic change in the song where the key change is to E major and then the tempo really slows down and we're in 4-4 time. And it's the instrumental part is the start. So from the very beginning, 8.28 to 10.09, it's no percussion, just synths. And you hear, I'm going to assume Rick Wakeman playing these real airy, just these real airy, um, enough to move the piece along until the dot, 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 dot. And when you get to that, that's leading into the intro, okay? So the intro is when John Anderson sings, in her white lace, you could clearly see the lady sadly looking, saying that she'd take the, you know, that whole thing. It's about four bars. And then after the intro is the first chorus, I get up, I get down. It's four bars at first, and second, but the third time they play the chorus, it's a six bar chorus, okay? <laughs> the verse finally starts when John Anderson sings by himself and you hear him singing, uh, two million people barely satisfy, 200 women watch one woman cry too late. And in the background, you can hear Steve and Chris singing this um, uh, back and forth thing. Uh, the, the verses are 10 bars, okay? And then the final part of the I'll get up, I'll get down, which is the fifth part, is the organ at the end. So you have the organ at the beginning, or the synths, or whatever it is. And then at the end, Rick Wakeman is playing uh, from 1215 to 1249, what sounds like a gigantic church organ, like a big, big organ. And it's that whole, wah, wah, na, 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 that whole part. Da, 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 da. Okay, it does that for, um, what about 44 seconds? So that's I'll get up, I'll get down. It's uh, the instrumental, then an introduction, then the chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and then that, that ending is the, the organ part. The final part of Close to the Edge is part four, Seasons of Man. It runs from 414 to 1841, or uh, about four and a half minutes, just shy of four and a half minutes. It's in the key of C major, so the key's going back up, and it's uh, back to a moderate tempo, and we're back to those wacky time signatures like in the beginning, 12, 8, 3, 2, 4, 4, 3, 4, 3, 2. You kind of get a flavor of everything here. The introduction is uh, starts at fourteen fourteen and runs to fifteen fifty five, so you know about a minute forty one seconds. It's the main melody of the song, but this time Rick Wakeman's playing it like on a synth, like he's leading it. The whole uh, that whole thing, and then there's a keyboard solo from fifteen o two to fifteen fifty five. This is one of my favorite Rick Wakeman solos because what he's doing is the do 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 the after that is the the final verse okay and by count if you're counting along to me it's the seventh verse uh, it's an eight bar verse the time between the notes relates the color to the scenes you know if you count the first verse of the song as i count it as two but uh it depends on how you count the verse i count it this is the seventh verse and to me it's the best part of the song with the keyboard solo and then the first verse and really the whole Seasons of Man, that's what makes the song because it's a big, 
building, um, especially after I get up, I get down, you really build up to this uh, great moment of the song. There's a bridge in this song, On the Hill We View the Silence of the Valley. That's an eight-bar bridge. And then the outro, Close to the Edge, Down by a River. And the outro is about 27 bars to the end of the song. Seasons of Man ends the song. The introduction, the keyboard solo, the first verse, the bridge, and the outro. And that is all of Close to the Edge, the best song ever built. Track two is And You and I. Lyrics by John Anderson. Music by Bruford, Squire, and Howe. It's 10 minutes and 9 seconds. It's a mini quintet, is how Rick Wakeman describes it in Yes Years. It has different movements which go to each other, and um, I get the feeling that he's quite proud of this song. I, I, I've never quite known what to make of it. It seems like it's almost like a love song, and you and I. Um, but it's not a love song like 80 Chicago or those big ballads. It's a yes kind of love song. Um, again, this one is divided into four parts. The first part is Chord of Life. It starts in the key of D major, and it's moderate tempo, and 3-4 time, and the whole opening is in 3-4, and then it changes to 4-4 time. The introduction is Steve Howe on acoustic guitar. To me, it's the best part of the song, and it carries the song right through the first verse. So the introduction is how it starts with some uh, harmonics that do, 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 do. But then it goes into the main riff, which is the da, 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 da. The introduction lasts for a minute, 40 seconds. And that's when John Anderson starts singing the first verse, A Man Conceived a Moment's Answers to the Dream. It's a 16-bar verse in 3-4 time. And then, I, I don't know how else to describe it, but there's a second part of the song, which is, after the second verse, John Anderson sings, Coins and crosses never hold their fruitless worth. Chords are broken, locked inside the mother. You know, that whole part. It's ten bars in 4-4 four, four time. And then, for And You and I, there's a refrain, which uh, John Anderson sings solo, And You and I climb over the sea to the valley. That is in 3-4 time and 2-4 time. And uh, it's eight bars total. And so Chord of Life is an intro, verse, verse, that coins and crosses part, which I don't, I don't know what it is. I, don't, I guess it's a bridge maybe. Or, um, and then the refrain part, the and you and I climb over the seat of the valley, which is really he's just singing the end of the verse. <laughs> part two is called Eclipse. Now the key is moving here. Uh, it's moving up from D to E, so it's going up two steps, and the tempo is slowing down. And uh, the time is still in, uh, mainly in 4-4, four, four, but changing to 3-4. So Eclipse starts with the Mellotron part, which is it begins at 348 to 457. This is Rick Wakeman for about a minute and nine seconds total. Um, to me, it's the second best part of the song after the introduction. The Mellotron is just this really sweeping, beautiful, um, it sounds like violin strings and cellos. Um, what's going on here is Rick Wakeman, it, he's like ascending the song up. He's lifting it up. He's making it more powerful. The That whole thing. And uh, I think Steve might be playing some slide after that. But it's just a big part. After that is the chorus, a whole thing. Uh, by the way, Eclipse is really short. The whole thing is about 23 bars. The chorus is 10 bars of it. The chorus is when John sings, Coming quickly to terms of all expression laid, Emotion revealed as the ocean made. As a movement regained regarded in both the same, All complete in the sight of seeds of life with you. Okay. That's the chorus. That's 10 bars. So all, um, all the second part is Eclipse is the Mellotron part with the big Steve Howe thing and then the chorus and then an outro. Part three of And You and I is The Preacher, The Teacher. We're still in the key of E major and the speed, the tempo is picking back up to a moderate tempo in 4-4 four, four time. The intro is 617 to 635. This is when, during the live performances, Chris Squire plays the harmonica. You don't hear that on this, but if you've ever heard Keys to Ascension uh, or any other various 
um, uh, Yes albums that have And You and I since 94, 95. Chris Squire plays the, the <whistles> on the harmonica part. And, but the main melody is Steve Howe on acoustic guitar playing the, he's basically sort of replaying the introduction of the song. And then the dum, did a dum, did a dum, did a dum, did a dum. He's doing that. That's what's going on here. Then it goes to the third verse of the song. Okay. The, the verse is 16 bars of sad preacher nailed upon the color door of time. And then the second verse is also 16 bars. I listened hard but could not see. And then um, lastly is the chorus. It's the same chorus that's in Eclipse. So coming quickly to terms, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the Preacher, the Teacher is a, it's verse, verse, chorus, and outro. And that outro seamlessly transitions to part four, Apocalypse. Apocalypse is in the key of B major. And it slows down again to like a slower, moderate tempo, back to 3-4 time. The verse starts at 927 to 955, and uh, to 955, and it's 13 bars. And you and I climb, crossing the shapes in the morning. It's It's got more of a happier jingle. Um, and, and that makes sense because we're going to B major, which is an unusual key anyway. But it just sounds like a happier, even though it's titled Apocalypse, uh, you get the feeling it's a good ending to the song. And Apocalypse is just that verse and then the song ends quite abruptly actually track three on close to the edge is called siberian katru it's lyrics by anderson music by wakeman and Howe. it's eight minutes and 57 seconds i don't know why but in my mind i always think that chris squire is the author of the song and i think it's because of that big thumping bass line the whole bum 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 do 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 but it's not it's it's written by how and wakeman uh Bill Bruford in Yes Years, he, he talks about how I always liked Siberian Katru. It has a good logic to it, and you don't have to remember it. We had a good day that day, or a good week that week, is what how he describes it. Uh, and it is. It is a good, easy-moving song. Uh, it's in the key of G major. It's a moderate tempo at 120 beats per minute in 4-4 time. The whole thing, not all of it, but most of it's in 4-4. I'll call it out when it isn't. The intro is a minute and four seconds. It's got that big thumping bass line going. Um, and Chris is playing the lead that... Okay. The verse is Sing Bird of Prey. It's a 12-bar verse. And then the chorus is Even Siberia Goes to the Motions. It's 10 bars. This is where the time signature changes in the chorus. Some bars are 2-4 and some bars are 7-8 at the end of it. I think it's just one bar, actually. After the chorus, there's a refrain part, which um, this is when John Anderson sings Outboard, River, Blue, Tail, Tail, Fly. It's an eight-bar refrain. Uh, and then there's an instrumental break for 3.05 to 4.13, or about a minute and eight seconds. Um, this, is a, this is an opportunity for them to solo. So there's like a harpsichord solo by Rick Wakeman. And then there's a guitar solo after that by Steve Howe, which... I don't know if he's playing with a slide or on slide guitar, but uh, it's definitely a guitar solo. And then the final part is the bridge. Hold down the window, hold out the morning that comes into view. It's a 10-bar bridge. And that's pretty much the whole song, Siberian Katru. Uh, before I get into the song arrangement, I've um, I tried to research what Katru means. Uh, Siberia is obviously Siberia, Russia. Katru, uh, I got blasted for saying it was a uh, Arabic word. I don't know if that's true. That's something that might be just some nonsense that John um, came up with. But he is generally just singing about um, nature, birds, prey life <laughs> it's john anderson he uses words like colors um the song structure is the introduction the verse chorus verse chorus a refrain the uh the break which includes the harpsichord solo and the guitar solo a bridge and then followed by verse refrain outro that's siberian katru 
great track too. Yeah, in summary for Close to the Edge, it, it is one of the best, certainly Yes albums, if not prog rock album. Um, I, and like I said, I do think the studio version is really good and excellent. You might find for yourself that you like live versions of each of these songs better. Uh, if you don't, that's okay too. Um, but I've, I've often in the past, like when I would listen to this, I would start with Siberian Katru and then listen to Close to the Edge and then And You and I. So just I would ch change up the order a little bit. But it's perfectly fine to listen to from end to end the way they designed it. Um, the sales, it sold a lot, 1.5 million, which really surprised me. That's a big, that's a big selling album, especially for Yes. I mean, I don't, I don't ever think of Yes as a big selling album rock group uh but that was good enough for number 18 in 1972 and it's the number third overall best-selling yes record progarchives.com the user rating is 4.68 which is number one um, it edges out selling england by the pound by genesis and in the court of the crimson king by king crimson and wish you were here by pink floyd by just by like a few hundreds uh yeah a few hundredths of a point that's like 0.02 points that's what it's beating them by <laughs> they're all very good albums um, allmusic.com gives it five stars the rolling stone gave it five stars in 79 and four stars in 04 i'm, I'm kind of curious about what they would give it now <laughs> it scares me a little bit thinking about um for me, I have this uh, I have this number three behind Relayer and Tales from Topographic Oceans. I I kind of like I kind of historically bob back and forth between those three albums, but primarily Tales is my favorite, and then Relayer is my second favorite, and then Close to the Edge. I've had moments when I told people Close to the Edge is my favorite Yes album, but I, I would say historically and even right now I would I would say. Um, Tales from Topographic Oceans is my favorite. I, I know that's not what I said in the ranking video, but um, I had Relayer 1 and Tales 2 and Close to the Edge 3. That's just how I felt that week. Most of the time, if you ask me, I'm going to tell you Tales is my favorite. This, But let me tell you, it's not, it's not too far ahead of this one or Relayer. Um, <laughs> I, like, I love all of them. Um, after Close to the Edge, Bill Bruford left the band and he joined King Crimson. And what he says in the Yes Years video is he did it for good musical reasons on the invitation of Bob Fripp. And, uh, you know, only he knows if that was the right move for him. I'm sure he thinks it was. But uh, I wonder if he has any regrets. Um, probably not, but can't help to think about it. Uh, anyway, that's it. That's the Close to the Edge review. One of my favorite albums, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any comments, you can certainly leave comments. I'm, I'm always happy to read your comments, and I like to respond back even. And uh, thumbs up, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. And next up on the channel will be Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd, probably this weekend or early next week. And then after that, uh, King Crimson, Lark's Ton and Aspic. Super album too. Thanks guys. I'm out.